Hello, I'm Dr. Nazi Hamad, I'm a medical oncologist uh, at Queen's University in Canada. I'm also a visiting professor at the University of Nairobi, uh, Kenya. I will be discussing the abstract of Prolizuma versus chemotherapy in MSI, mismatch repair deficient um, aesthetic colorectal cancer, phase 3 note 177 study. Uh, to define microsatellites for the sake of oncology residents, these are short, randomly repeated DNA nucleotide sequences that are scattered throughout the genome. These sequences um, are especially prone to accumulation of mutations, which are frame shift mutation, and uh, base pair substitutions, which are mismatches. If uh, you do not correct these errors or these mutations, then you will have mutations in genes that are responsible for uh, restoring growth, signal transduction, and apoptosis. So what happens, you get genomic instability, which is MSI and tumorigenesis and cancer. And these um, mismatch repair uh, proteins are DNA, uh, part of the DNA repair pathway that is uh, MMR. So that's what MMR stands for, mismatch repair. Uh, proteins, and these are MSH2, MLH1, PMS2, and um, MSH6. And uh, with the way they function when they uh, detect uh, an error, they come together, dimerize, and correct it. So if they these pro proteins themselves are defective or not present, then you get um, microsatellite instability and you get tumorigenesis. At the clinical level, uh, MSI high cancers are 15 to 17% of cancers. 3% uh, of them are Lynch syndrome, which is germline mutation, and the rest is sporadic, which means epigenetic um, mutations uh, or silencing through hypermethylation of MLH1 from water. At the molecular level, uh, these uh, lead to uh, what we call the mutator phenotype mutations in so many genes, and therefore you get formation of a lot of new antigens, and that's uh, the basis of why immunotherapy works uh, well in MSI and high cancers. They tend to be 5% um, of them uh, when it comes to metastatic disease. They are more right-sided. They have more frequent um, mutation of VRAF, and uh, they have uh, high tumor mutation burden. Uh, this is uh, phase, the first phase three uh, uh, trial uh, for caparizumab versus standard of care in first line therapy. Previously, we had phase one and two uh, studies that showed efficacy. So, the uh, clinical trial is uh, MA patients uh, who have metastatic disease, MSI high, and uh, treatment naive, uh, E first line, performance status zero to one, the randomized uh, one to one. Uh, the, uh, the experimental arm is pamperizumab, 200 uh, milligram few three weeks after 35 cycles. And the chemotherapy is the control arm, which is your regular chemotherapy, full FOX uh, or full theory, plus or minus babesizumab or cefuximab. And this will go on um, for 35 cycles of pamperizumab and optional crossover is allowed if you progress from chemotherapy to go to pamperizumab. The uh, primary endpoint as progression for survival and overall survival, and the secondary point, uh, endpoint is overall response rate. The uh, hazard ratio uh, for superiority was you need to detect 0.55 uh, for progression for survival. And uh, this is the characteristics of the patient. I want you to notice that as 30% are uh, left-sided tumors. So just because you have a left-sided cancer, that doesn't mean you cannot be MSI high and that there's an over-representation of um, BRF mutations and that we do not, uh, we have patients from Asia, mostly from North America and Europe. So hopefully we will see more patients from Africa in future trials. The result, uh, the progression-free survival was doubled in Pamperismab 16.5 versus 8.2. You see uh, some of the phenomena we see with IO in that uh, occasionally the chemotherapy will do better initially, but then uh, those who respond to IO will, uh, or immunotherapy will do better. Uh, everyone benefited. Uh, which, what was uh, surprising is uh, the uh, RAS and NRAS mutations did not seem to benefit. BRAS uh, patients benefited. 
and uh, the response, uh, overall response rate was 43.8% uh, in pembrolizumab and 33.1% in chemotherapy. The duration of response was not reached for pembrolizumab and it was 106 for chemotherapy. When it comes to adverse event uh, that we see more in chemotherapy, uh, you'll find that the grade uh, three were um, almost uh, mostly zero in pembrolizumab compared uh, with grade three in chemotherapy such as retropinium and the other, so it's all tolerated. For immune-related adverse event, we see only the 3% uh, of colitis and 3% of hepatitis. So pembrolizumab is very well tolerated. There was crossover that was allowed. So we're waiting for to see the overall survival result. And in summary, uh, the conclusion was that pembrolizumab is safe and effective when compared to chemotherapy uh, in uh, MSI high uh, tumors um, with population full survival 16 versus 8.2. And uh, according to the author, this should be the uh, new standard of care. I encourage you to read uh, the paper, which was just published in the year of medicine this week, December 3rd, uh, there and the editorial, as there are several unanswered questions as to who will benefit, uh, who uh, um, will not benefit, and whether if we add uh, CDLO4 inhibitors or chemotherapy uh, to pembrolizumab, um, we'll see more benefit. Uh, we need to discuss consideration for African patients. Uh, prevalence of MSI. So far, the study seems to say that maybe it's higher in Africa. Uh, there is a cost associated with MSI testing and cost of immunotherapy drugs, which are very expensive. Uh, infrastructure, because uh, the adverse events of immunotherapy, uh, we, do, we do need clinical trials uh, in uh, immunotherapy in Africa. So this is the title here. And uh, if we have more patients with MSI, high uh, in, in Africa, maybe these drugs will be cost effective as uh, uh, chemotherapy may not work in MSI high tumors. So uh, hopefully this uh, will be discussed and looked at in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.